Alright pals, I've been commissioned for another video review after the frankly overwhelming response to episode 1, the monotoning. You may notice that we've had a bit of an upgrade with the mic, so it can actually register human emotion now which is always nice. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Battleborn. I'm more fond of Battleborn than I really think I should be, a bit like the delicious high you get off cough syrup. I wouldn't really say that it's riddled with issues, but it does have a number of problems that I do believe inhibit it from being the success that it has the potential to become. So just to give you a quick overview in case you haven't read the article my colleague Steven has written up, which you should by the way, Battleborn is another entry into the MOBA shooter market with a bit of a twist. It puts a strong emphasis on including the PvE elements of your standard MOBA as well as the PvP. This means that lanes, towers, neutral camps, upgradable defences and above all else minion waves are all part of the game's various win conditions. This immediately differentiates it from the likes of Overwatch because it has a sort of similar to TF2 player versus player setup. It creates a fundamentally different experience with Battleborn when you include these NPC minions etc. So I suggest you put the question of whether Battleborn can compete with Overwatch to one side because honestly it really doesn't have to. It's almost a different genre despite it being a hero shooter and Battleborn will make a lot more sense to you once you dispense with those comparisons. One of the things that's both a blessing and a curse about Battleborn is there really is quite a lot to talk about, but I only have the sufficient airtime and, let's be honest, patience for so much. So with that in mind, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to talk about what I reckon works about the game and a couple of the things that are holding it back. Now, I'm playing the PS4 version of the game, so I'll leave it up to you and your exacting standards whether the game holds up in terms of graphical fidelity and frame rates and the like. I can't give a decent opinion about those things, my head isn't far enough up my own arse. So firstly, let's talk the positives. If you're making a MOBA, one of the foundations upon which your success is decided is the quality of your hero lineup. The longevity of a MOBA is undefined. Most of the time it doesn't have a story mode or a single player experience, so there's no predetermined guarantee of how much game you're actually going to get out of your 50 quid. Playing multiplayer matches, often on a limited number of maps, over and over again, are how you make the return on that investment. And if you think about it, that's actually quite a hard sell. For MOBAs at least, the incentive to keep playing the game in a lot of ways relies upon the heroes because that's how you switch up your playstyle and you counter the opposing team comps in the process, giving you a varied and interesting competitive experience. The heroes aren't part of the draw, they are the draw. Essentially, Battleborn lives or dies by its roster. Fortunately, Battleborn ODs on personality and one of the most positive examples of its jerky convulsions is the hero lineup. I mean, the guys in the art department had a field day when coming up with these guys. You do have some standard soldier and archer characters, but that's inevitable. You're always going to get them. That's just to get your eye in. You've also got cursed space knights, lightsaber vampires. An insane AI occupying a steampunk suit of armor got him as well. There's a teenage Scooby-Doo style detective that's also possessed by a demonic parasite. Ooh, nice. A teeny tiny little penguin that commands a sort of Jaeger styled mech suit. And a giant marauding ice elemental called Kelvin. Plus there's a sort of, um, uh, bird man. Love it. This is a properly interesting and varied selection of characters. Very few of them are even human, and it's refreshing to see Gearbox push the boat out in terms of their character design, which they'd sort of need to do considering the world building and the tone that they've used to contextualise the game. I, I like things that are different, it shows a bit of creative conviction. If the tone is consistent and the personality of your game is well conveyed, folk will get on board. It doesn't always have to be set in the grim dark future on the planet Grimdark following the taciturn adventures of Mr. Fucking Happy over here. If you're a joyless boffin, and I know I am, you're going to get a big kick out of how Battleborn's progression system works. So, rewards and unlockables are a big part of how to keep a multiplayer only game alive. It's part of the incentive to continue to play after all. As mentioned in the Overwatch video, which I'm still sorry about by the way, it can be really really detrimental to the whole game if it's poorly implemented. So, in some instances it'll be too superfluous to motivate players to put the time in, or, and this is worse, it will give experienced players too great an advantage over newbies when they first play. And this can be dispiriting to the new players because they just get their shit wrecked too many times in the first couple of hours of play, and they end up crying fuck it to the entire game. And so they should, because a successful multiplayer game needs to concern itself with both veteran players and new players in equal measure. Battleborn's reward system is through in-game currency and loot. More meaningfully perhaps, it rewards players after every match with both command experience and character experience. It sounds confusing and that's because it is. Basically, command experience provides account-wide unlockables like new characters, whereas character experience contributes to things like unlocking new skins, upgrades and lore rewards for that specific character. Can I also take a moment to say that none of this is content-gated or purchasable using real money? You just earn the rewards by playing the game. There's a notion, eh? What a good idea. Perhaps more folks should give it a try. I'm talking to you. 
and you. You also occasionally earn loot rewards, which provides items that offer positive bonuses to certain attributes like accuracy, shield regen, health or movement speed. You can create a loadout of three items and attach them to a character for use in battle. What actually makes this ingenious and sidesteps the whole issue that I was talking about previously is that the items have to be activated. You do not start a match with the item's benefits. You need to spend match currency, which is referred to as shards, to activate items in your loadout. And the more powerful the item, the more shards it costs to activate it. You can also use the shards to upgrade your minions, create turrets, fortifications and health stations. And this creates a trade-off where you need to decide whether it's more important to activate that epic piece of kit you've got or invest it in your team's defences, making access to the benefits of your loot a strategic choice rather than a foregone conclusion in every game. It also means that newbies with no loadout have a means of contributing to their team because they just spend their otherwise useless shards on investing them into the team's fortifications, which actually engenders in new players how important it is to work with the team. Everyone picking the same high damage character and pouring their shards into their own loadout, which is sadly what a lot of new players do, isn't going to work. Decisions are ultimately assessed on how they benefit the comp rather than your own score, which is depressingly difficult for a lot of players to wrap their heads around when they first play. But this leads me to the problem that Battleborn has, in my opinion anyway. The progression system is actually a perfect microcosm of the sickness that's stricken the entire game. The design of the system is good for new players, except that it's completely indecipherable at first glance. I mean, command ranks, character ranks, loots, common rare epic loots, loadouts, mutations, low rewards, skins, taunts, there is just too much shit, man. I've played a fair bit of Dota and Heroes of the Storm, so I have a rough understanding of how a MOBA works, and even I struggled with all this. There's so little to guide a new player on what they're meant to be doing. I hope you already understand the concepts of laning minion waves and neutral camps, by the way, because if you don't, you get to eat shit, mate. No tutorials for you. The story does nothing to educate you about what you're supposed to be doing during the multiplayer matches. If anything, it reinforces concepts and strategies that you shouldn't employ in competitive play. And the game is just so loud, man. Yes, it's full of colour and exciting to look at, but the art styles and model design of characters and minions is so frantic and confused that amidst the hordes of enemies and particle effects, half the time you're staggering about half blind trying to figure out what the fuck is the priority target. You can signal a specific point to your team, but the little marker that's generated is laughably impotent in amongst the explosions of colour and hordes of writhing bodies. I normally play large disruptive tank characters and I felt like a complete liability man every time I walked into a fight. I got rinsed immediately because I was so noticeable, I got Swiss cheesed. My best games were playing with Oscar Mike, a small standard soldier character as you can see, and I genuinely believe the reason that I did so well is because the enemies couldn't tell me the fuck apart from the minions. On top of all this right, it's... It's a gearbox game, which means it comes with a certain style of writing. Now, I'm not going to start ranting on whether or not the game is charming or if it's funny because humour is subjective and blah 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 diplomatic positions. What I am going to rant about is the fact that the game talks too much. It's just... It's just it's just too much. <laughs> like, the announcer talks, the win conditions talk, the neutral minions talk. God, do the heroes talk. You're mincing about a firefight, trying to peer through the clouds of explosions and lasers to try and figure out what is shooting you so much. And all the while, your own character's squealing in pain, the other heroes are shouting pithy remarks at one another, and the announcer's getting drowned out by the same five or six lines minrex spouts every match. I understand the need for player feedback, for world building, and injecting humour and personality into the experience, but the game is so eager to provide these things that it ends up drowning itself out with the sheer volume of it. And I actually feel that it's detrimental overall to the player experiencing the game for what it is. Example, when I was a kid, right, I went to a birthday party with a clown, before clowns as a race died out. And what I remember was that the party was the tits, but the clown just fucked everybody off. He never stepped back as one does in the clowning profession, and assesses whether or not their antics improve the general levity and ambience of the party as a whole. He just honked his nose over and over again and continually made the kids stop what they were doing to watch him make balloon animals. Now fair enough, that guy needs to earn his dinner, but sometimes you just need to fuck off and let people eat birthday cake, man. Anyway, to make this relevant, Battleborn misses out on being a great game to a larger audience because it's far too eager to impress. It's included so much humour into the game that there's no silence or sobriety to effectively contrast the humour with. It's spent so much time cramming the game with upgrades, customization options and additional content for veteran players that it's forgotten to teach the new ones the basic objectives and concepts of its genre. It's a shame because Battleborn is a great game, I just don't think that it's an excellent one. Yet. The game has a lot to offer, but the way that it's all been implemented means it currently risks getting in the way of itself. I hope the beta is illuminating for Gearbox. They're a good company and I want to see them succeed.
Everything's just a bit hyperactive. Rein it in a bit, get it off the sugary drinks, give it some regular exercise, it'll be getting straight A's before you know it.